Let's start her up. So today we're going to do a recap of the machines in here, well, not really a recap, we're going to go around the room on it anyway like we did on the first video, just to show you what we've got in here. So we shall start over at the good old Astro City and it has survived the test of time of everything moving around here <laughs> ever since it came in here. It's, uh, it's survived because it is an awesome machine and I can't uh, recommend it highly enough anyone that gets an opportunity to get an ashtray city guys pick one up um, vertical horizontal orientation doesn't matter it's a great way to sit down play with your friends or by yourself and beautiful big 29 inch screen these ashtray cities these little japanese candy cabs were just built for you know just sitting back and relaxing and, and playing games for long periods of time so moving on is the good old neo geo the only thing i'm concerned about with this guys is a bit of a double up with other machines that i have that can do a horizontal cabinet layout and two players it's a cool cabinet absolutely like it's just that whole neo geo look and feel i just i just love it um and i've just always wanted one so you know it, it, it fits that bill really really well but it doesn't really do anything different to you know any any other cab that's horizontal in a way but anyway moving around we've got the world rally which is in the apb or the lai version of the apb cabinet and i'm torn with this one guys and you know i spent all that time putting in the new monitor the big monitor and um that monitor's great and playing world rally on there's really cool people come over they tend to gravitate to that quite quickly and because it's just an easy game to just just hop on and start driving it's not a difficult game at all uh, it's not technical you know it's just hop on and have fun and so from that perspective that game actually works really really well in here but again it's a one trick pony at the moment um, it's a game within a cabinet but it's not the right cabinet for it <laughs> uh, it's a cool cabinet though I, I do really really dig the cabinet so uh moving on from the apb machine we have the super sprint and wow i'm still absolutely flabbergasted that i managed to pick that up um what an absolute score this machine is um it's got some graphical corruption on it um i've been having some some issues there i've got a replacement board which i'm going to use for my old championship sprint to fix that and I just haven't got around to doing that. <laughs> it's just on the list of projects. Um, I've also got a whole new control panel um, because of the, the oddities on this particular control panel version, which I covered in a previous episode. And I've got um, a whole suite of new pots for the, um, uh, for the accelerators. So I've got all the parts of that one, guys. I'm just going to get off my butt and actually uh, fix it up and clean it up. And I really, really, or want to do that anyway that's definitely a keeper it's a big machine guys that's the only thing it's a big machine in here um absolutely love it though it's a classic it's an atari it's it's a me all over that one of course i've got the championship sprint i've still got that machine moving around we hit the virtual pinball table did a few, couple of uh, a recent episode on this and it's uh, coverage on some, some top uh, virtual uh, pinball tables what, what more can I say? I, I just love this machine. Yes, I would love to have real pimples, wouldn't we all? <laughs> a, they're expensive, B, they take up so much room. 
this is the next best thing and I enjoy it immensely um, and if any of you guys are thinking of putting a virtual pin together then do. moving on from the virtual pinball machine we have uh, the drums and the drums haven't changed of course um, but absolutely loving playing the drums and uh, playing against music in here it's just you know I mean it's nothing to do with the arcade you know it's nothing to do with the theatre it's uh, it's just my enjoyment of drumming and enjoyment of music and that's something I don't want to take out of here just to replace with a couple of machines the next machine that's along here which is the uh, the ice cold beer setup, and uh, again on the funny uh, round circular arcade cabinet, and what again what a score that was! Uh, really, really cheap, really, really unusual. Funnily enough, the guy that I picked up the teching cab guys, um, he was telling me about it. I, I mean, he hasn't seen my channel, and and he didn't know I had one, and he's and he was talking about some other games that he had. Because he had a, like a rolling thunder in his garage as well so i knew he had other other machines i didn't see his other collection though and he did say that i don't know how the conversation came up but he did say he picked up one of those um circular ones and was you know going on about how amazing it was and i said i've got one as well this has worked really really well though uh as a cool out ice cold beer setup it's also as a jukebox which i played around with and started with uh, but anyway, I love it. Um, the form factor is really cool. It doesn't take up a lot of a room. Um, it's a conversation piece for sure. Uh, very, very cool. <laughs> so moving around, let's look at the Versus cabinet. And of course, just picked up this recently. You would have seen the uh, the recent video all about it. Um, and I had a few games with my, my son. I'll have quite a few games with my son, uh, Mitch, and absolutely loved it. We had a huge challenge the other night. Uh, my two girls got them on it, and they were just like immediately just wanting to stay on it <laughs> so um probably normally wouldn't give them sort of fighting games to play but they're getting older now so that's cool and they uh they really really enjoyed it so for now i've actually ordered some uh extra tekken cards i actually use the card reader because it's got all these cool th features where you can save your um you know save your character and earn money and you can change your you know characters um looks with different costumes and stuff and that and then also that saves it as a ghost character so that if someone else plays another time your ghost character could play against them with the things that you set them up with it's all quite cool and i sort of want to explore all that and just wow i <laughs> i know i've just gone on and on and on about that machine but it is absolutely crazy crazy good and i'm so glad i've got it moving around the next sad machine sitting in the corner there is the outrun and it's all off and it's not working and it's been off for months now because uh, ever since I picked it up haven't uh, had a working board I picked it up without a board I ended up getting a board the board wasn't working got it to Joey uh, Joey's had some not issues but um, he needs to get an easy way of getting it connected up because it's not jammer um, and of course he doesn't have all the wiring harness and all the rest of it so for him to you know create a wiring harness um, to get it running and testing it it's a real well it's, just, it's a bit of a pain but it's more the time he just doesn't have the time to do it besides all of that unbelievable that i have an outrun in this theater it's just the classic game i've you know, gone and talked about this so many times absolutely awesome love it um, can't wait to actually get it going anyway moving on we have the LAI standard sort of LAI fat boy <laughs> it's got the fat boy cab and uh, this is pretty much a generic cab so there's not really a there's not a lot of nostalgia there for me for this particular cab because I didn't grow up in Australia with these particular machines I've learned to appreciate them a lot more you know I've learned a lot about all the LAI different types of cabinets this was a real staple it was around a lot um, you know handled any sort of game in there it's a real general generic cab uh, it's a nice form factor it's got a big 25 inch screen in it um, it's 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 a fat boy <laughs> so, moving on from that we have good old hyper olympic in the beautiful tato red cab oh i've talked about this so many times guys i think you know all those of you that follow the channel you know you'll know they absolutely love this uh love this game and i love that cabinet as well of course it would be cool if i could get that back to the defender that it was um but of course i just love hyper olympic and this was a conversion kit uh for it back in the day 
Will it stay over time? Um, that's a tough one because Hyperolympic, of course, only really requires three buttons and could be emulated onto the other main box. Uh, but I must say that the emulation, I, I was sort of struggling to get it looking as nice as the original PCB, which is what I've got running in the uh, the red Tato cab. So, so yeah, I. Um, uh, for, for now it's definitely staying here it's, it's a definite fun easy game for people to get into guys um, so I think that's definitely a keeper at least for the short term moving around we have good old space invaders <sighs> oh, what can I say about spaces I did a whole episode on on that as well and you know that, that's just the history of, of all of all this all these games and and it's always going to hold a, a special place for for me um it, it's, it's what kick-started everything in terms of gaming for me anyway so i that is that is the history piece that is the centerpiece in terms of historic um historic moments and and gaming history so definitely going to keep that um will it always stay in here probably uh, again, if I get tight, who knows, um, but you know, it's a key. Moving around into the middle, we have uh, Wonderboy cracking on there into the Hankin cocktail machine. And uh, again, if you go back to the, to the episode where I picked that machine up and cleaned it off because it was all covered in black paint and had horrible silver, oh, I was awful. Cleaned all that off, got back the brilliant, beautiful wood, which I'm so happy with. And uh, and I just and it's just a beautiful cocktail. I love that form factor. Moving around to the main screen, um, yeah, I'm still still running the old projector, and of course I do want to get that changed out, guys. Get a nice 4K K, uh, screen. Um, be nice to get an OLED, wouldn't it? <laughs> Big, uh, you know, 75 uh, inch or uh, over 80 inch OLED 4K display. Ching ching. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to justify that. So I might have to get something in between uh, as an interim. At least get a nice big, big 4K uh, display, but perhaps not OLED at this stage. On the on the shelf, which I just put up recently, just sorted out a shelf there, and I've got the good old Atari 800, which of course is the machine that I grew up with. Um, and haven't really got back to that actually. We want to get back to that on the channel at some point. Talk about some of the cool games that are on there. Um, and I've also got my old PlayStation 1 and PS2 on there. I don't actually have them currently rigged up. They are there. PlayStation 3 uh, and our old VHS. Well, it's actually a new VHS player, which also allows you to dub over two CDs. So just in case I get the old nostalgic VHS out from somewhere and just whack that on. And then moving around we get to the Atari shelf and for those guys who've been around for a while you remember I had to get rid of this out of the theatre because I ran out of room and this was one big big shelf one tall shelf well I figured out a way of cutting it in half <laughs> this is like I seem to be doing these days is if it doesn't fit cut it in half uh, so anyway I cut it I, well, I didn't cut it in half I just separated it in the middle it was able to be separated and uh, got one of my boys to help me um, set it up in the in the uh, in the corner there, and got all the cool Atari gear, all the 8-bit stuff, and some of the VCS um, stuff in there as well. So uh, anyway, so yes, getting to the Grand Champion cockpit. Whoa. Again, another machine which I'm just I, I still can't believe I managed to pick that up. Um, really, really rare it seems. <laughs> I can't believe it's just sitting outside someone's house under their veranda, on their porch and uh, covered with a tarpaulin and of course it had pole position in there originally which we ended up removing after I desperately tried to get going and Joey tried to get the board going and we spent you know a bit of time and money trying to do that but wasn't to be and in the end I ended up being a PC conversion and uh, and I, I'm glad that, that, that I did that. I mean, again, I think I mentioned it right from the start. I definitely did mention it when we, we did the pickup and all the rest of it, that this is a bizarre cabinet for the original Grand Champion game because that game is a 2D, uh, you know, a, above view driving game. It's not a 3D driver. Um, made much more sense having pole position in there, but, you know, it would have originally had a vertical screen and had all the uh, LEDs for the, you know, your score and everything down the side and all that stuff was gone. So, 
at the end it was converted and I still absolutely enjoy having that cabinet. I still enjoy looking at the artwork. It's a cool piece of history um, and it's awesome playing all my PC games, playing modern games as well as older games uh, in there as well. And I guess that's the other thing guys is I'm now starting to feel like I have a good mix of games, you know, right from the old and then you know, moving up into some of the newer shooters like on the Astro City and then of course we've got Tekken now on the Versus and I'm thinking about all those later P PS2 games in there which gives it a nice balance. And then, uh, you know, on the main, main projector I'm playing, you know, all the latest PC games on there and of course I can do that in the Grand Champion cockpit for the driving games. So I, I'm feeling really, um, really like I've covered every every sort of range of of years and style of cabinet, and you know, and, and that's nice. And, that, and in a way, uh, it, it wasn't a, a goal that I originally you know was strived for. It sort of just happened that way. And I think just my mindset is each time I see a particular cabinet, I'm like, oh wow, that that, that could fit in. And it, you know, I sort of I, I figure out why that fits in at that time it's not like something i'm pre-thinking about if that makes any sense so so anyway guys moving on from the green champion is my scratch built main cab we've talked about this a couple of times now and uh still love it for its triple screen setup i've, I've, I've noticed again still that the um the third screen there is not working properly in terms of the flies it's all scrunched up let me get that fixed make it full screen but yeah i uh i'm gonna I'm going to have to uh, move this one along. Uh, I've got so many, you know, uh, original cabinets now. There's no real room for home-built stuff. The only cool thing, of course, it still has the fridge. <laughs> it still has the triple screen set up. But a lot of that, you know, at least the triple screen set up, I want to get set up into the uh, LAI uh, Fat Boy as a replacement. Uh, the fridge, though, I don't know where I'm going to put that. And I may have to forego that fridge i might have to get a different size fridge so i can squeeze that in somewhere else in here so uh so anyway that one there of course yep playing all my main games um absolutely cool for that but yeah that'll go into the fat boy at some stage moving around we really well we've finished in terms of games in here of course i do have other machines and they're just not in here so we we go through the list we've got the sega blast i've got the uh logitech space invaders the white top one the very special one that i grew up with and played you know it's my first space invaders out in the main living room i still have the one of the daytoners with the date which is working the other one is sitting outside the other daytona machine the twin is sitting outside under cover what else have I got out there? I also have uh, the fake Sega Blast. So that's sitting out there next to the Daytona out in the living area. Uh, and I also have the cocktail machine, which is running an original pleats. Then hiding underneath the pool table, I still have my original scratch built cocktail machine, <laughs> which I really just don't need at all. And then in the uh, storage area, I also have the championship sprint, which I mentioned before. So that's sitting out there. Um, and that's about it i think that is it in terms of all the machines that are in the theater so that is the walk around update of what's in here and wow guys i um even just talking through all that i was just like jeez uh, so many cabs now um, but still absolutely loving this theatre uh, but I'm still not sure actually if it will maintain as a theatre because it really is an arcade so anyway um, that's it for this video I uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, please give it a like if you liked it and uh, subscribe if you uh, want to see more till then ciao for now